No, the important thing is that he lost. Because it affects things in this game like... Oh, how, how's Emma doing? Is she being mysterious again? Nah. Okay. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Are they plotting a rebellion, too? I'm getting sick of all these rebels in this one continent. You'd think at some point somebody would notice. And Numbers is being mysteriously silent again, which means huh? I'm sorry. The no, I'm just point. reading. Oh, okay. What what other rebels are you talking about? The ILF? No, everybody's rebelling these days. It's just a thing to do. Oh, okay. I mean, we're probably going to get the crossbow games, and it's just going to turn out that we're rebels who successfully rebelled, and then we have to figure out how to stop the anti-rebels from rebelling against our rebel rebellion. So, in the crossbow games, you actually play the police. I know that much. The rebellious police? No, like the you you actually work for the Crossbell City Police Department, the CCPD. Oh, that's cool. Do we have to turn in our gun and our badge at any point? I have no idea. <laughs> probably. 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 I hope so. That would be hilarious. Can we play somebody who actually uses a cannon? But gets results? Tina gets results? No, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. <laughs> also, that's a mortar and not a cannon. Her gun, her weapon is called a cannon, so... Doesn't it use indirect fire? I mean... It does, but if you if you equip her guns, they're called cannons. Okay. Yeah. You know, you wouldn't think that a uh, special train could go faster than a regular train. Yep. She's asleep. Yep. Oh, look! Her little baubles are clipping through her... her shirt. Yeah, things like that pretty much always have clipping issues. Especially for uncommon poses, where it's just not worth the effort to yeah. make them not clip. Good. I have to admit, I really hope at some point we take a wrong train. <laughs> <laughs> and we just end up in the wrong city and the plot is wait Shit. why are we here <laughs> that actually hasn't happened yet you're right and that's a that's an always needed train like debacle on traveling yeah like even I've done that on almost every trip I did that on my last trip definitely and we like were able to correct it but it made what was supposed to be a half day trip a full day trip <laughs> I mean weren't you 
largely dealing with uh, stations where nothing was written in English. Very much so. <laughs> Seems like, like it would uh, make it more difficult to get the right train. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So, you can't just leave us without the train story. Well, I mean, there's like... One of them... One of them was pretty easy. Basically, we got... We didn't get off our train to get to our transfer, because I didn't realize the train was a ticket with a transfer in it. Um, okay. So, we basically went all the way... Like, we were headed to Bruges from Brussels, and then ended up all the way down at, like, the French border. Uh, <laughs> rather than <laughs> rather than Bruges, which is, like, over by the, uh, by the water. Yeah. Um, and then there was the time in Morocco where I was trying to do a day trip to go to some old oases nearby the sand dunes in the Sahara. Uh, but I ended up near the uh, conflicted uh, border zone of uh, the south, southern Morocco. And the only reason I knew this was because I got asked by a, a fairly well-armed individual, like, do I have my passport? And I was like, no, I don't need my passport. I'm not exiting the country. And they're like, yeah, you are. are you a journalist? And I was like, well, no, I'm not, technically. Oh, okay. Like, this is a disputed border of, like, a semi-civil war, not civil war kind of deal. Um, like, there's very small amounts of Morocco guns. would claim you're not crossing the border. There are a lot of people with guns who would disagree. Yes. Um, and, uh, so, like, I, I was like, okay, well, I'll get off. And they're like, well, you can't just get off. There's not, we're not at a station. I was like, oh, well, then what do we do? And nobody, nobody seemed to really know. And so, like, basically, they just, like, they sat next to me um, and, like, waited for me and then walked me off the train and then I got on the other train, like, going back. And so, That's wow. pretty great. So they so escorted like, well, you to the border and back. Yeah. Well, I, I went in past the border. I just, like, they just wouldn't let me, like, continue on past the next stop and then I had to get off. Um, and then I, like... This isn't really so much getting on the wrong train, but it was like, I guess it was, but I went to the right destination because I bought the train, um, or I, I bought a, uh, I bought a ticket to get on like a motor car bus to go to, um, Machu Picchu. Yep. And, uh, they're like, and I was like, okay, cool. So I get into this line. They're like, yes. And I was like, okay. So I got into this line and then I got onto the train. And I, I had been told that it could either be a bus or a train, so I was like, okay, cool, whatever. But I didn't realize, like, I was on, like, this super, super high-end train. <laughs> okay. Like, like, the people I was sitting around were wearing, like, Rolex watches and stuff like that. Okay. I asked, like, is this the train? Because it basically there's a train that goes to the Machu Picchu town and then goes to this nearby village town. And it was, like, it was it's built and operated by a French company huh. and not Peru. And so it's, like pretty expensive because it's all for it's only for tourists basically um and it was like it's like a hundred and something dollars a ticket hmm. which doesn't sound that much but when you take into consideration that like everything else in peru is pretty damn cheap i was just like what the hell so i clearly missed <laughs> yeah you probably like, paid what like under ten dollars for your ticket oh yeah I, I i paid i paid pennies yeah um it's what other people paid and then I've gotten onto some wrong boats before. I don't know if that's the same, but <laughs> so I know you guys. I mean, can't it's similarly it, bad. But um, yep. This this town apparently did work, uh, didn't work very well on the PS3 version. And so, oh, because uh, the fog. Yeah, and so the um one of the one of the main um goals for the PS the PC port was to ensure was to that make this work was to make it work at a at a um a nice clean 60 FPS. And so far, from what I've seen and heard, it actually does. Oh, was what the fog, like, sort of glitchy and jumping yeah, around? Yeah, ev well, the, just everything was kind of glitchy. Yeah, it, what happened was probably the fog just took too many resources for the P for the PS3 to render at the same time. Right. As everything else. Anyway, welcome to the Gram. Yep. Are we going to stay at the castle and it's going to be under siege?
Wait, wait, wait. We have a ninja butler? Apparently. Damn right. And he is sort he, he is super humble. Ninja butlers don't make sense though. Sure they do. We're supposed to have special operations uh, maids. Why not? Like the rules of this game have been Why not very both? clearly laid out. Oh, that's too much uh badass NPCs. Uh, I was going to say badass servants. Okay. Like, you get one Alfred, right? Yeah, this is Alfred. Yeah. But we also have uh, Elisa's Alfred. But she's not Alfred. She's a maid. She's much younger. You know, Alfred's an old, retired military badass. Yeah. Yeah, but you can have, like, young maid Alfred instead. <laughs> but we have young maid Alfred as well. And that's what I'm saying. It just dilutes Alfred too much. Acting master of the Arsade School of Swordsmanship. Okay, so he actually is supposed to be Alfred. Yep. Like, straight up. Got it. Although he isn't in the... Um, he doesn't remember the wars. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he does. Yeah, he probably does. He probably does actually remember the um, the, the war of Erebonian aggression. He probably got his uh, ass kicked by... Cassius? Cassius? Yep. Yep. Personally. I mean, who hasn't, really? <laughs> um, Estelle hasn't. Yeah, she has. She trained with no, him she when won. she was a kid. Right, but she wins. How do you know? Because he's the final boss. Of what? Something. Oh, okay. Like, it's a JRPG, there's always another final boss. <laughs> that uh, stone sculpture really did not look... um, stable. Like that bit where the uh, stones jut out. Mm -hmm. That, especially if it's an old, uh, old statue, the mortar's probably uh, beginning to rot, fall out, and those those stones should just basically come crashing down. So that's the lance maiden from two hundred years ago, and one of the two knights is uh, Laura's ancestor. Wait, we're going back in time. Of course. And Laura's going to be the knight? Of course. And there's going to be a creepy Back to the Future style uh, wanting to have sex with your own ancestor? I mean, you were you did you expect anything else? Well, who's Biff? <laughs> I'll have to think about that. It's going to be Emma. No, Emma's more likely to be um, Doc Brown. No, that's the cat. Oh. Because I didn't mention it, but we totally saw the cat run onto the train. I know. Because we're going to find out everything about the cat this chapter, probably. About two chapters after I stopped caring. <laughs> Of course she does. She's the daughter of the Viscount. How can the daughter of the Viscount not be popular? Unless she's... Well, I guess she... The, the daughter of the Viscount is in charge? Not popular. Sure. Oh, Eustace is pissed! For example, uh, Eustace's family is not particularly popular Well, that's because his dad is a dick. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay, sure. So the, like, the, if the Viscount is a dick, Laura's not going to be popular. Right. Well, the Viscount is not Still a in dick, charge. So. so dick. How many establishing shots of a cat do we need? <laughs> All the shots. All of them. Apparently so. That's... I Think of that number. Add three just for measure. Okay, so actual establishing shots of the cat so far is only two. 
There have been two moments where she just showed up in the background. Yeah, that's one too many. Like, we understand the cat is following us wherever we go when it runs onto a train. Sure. Onto the, our train. Not useless. He's always the detective. Uh, actually, it looks and like Gaius is the detective. Well, no, but the other one going, that mu they're like, I hear the clash of steel on steel. He's like, that must be sword fighting. Sure. Yeah, one of those is uh, distinctly Watsonian. Still, I like as a team, they follow the logic train. The logic train? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's better than following a boat. Trist is landlocked, you see. A boat wouldn't get us very far. Well, that's a nice establishing shot. Yeah. So, who's Rain gonna have to fight to prove he's a badass to the school? Laura. Probably. But no, he's already fought her. She would just say, I know how good he is. When did they fight? No, they didn't fight. That was the whole uh, reason she was pissed off at him for a while. Oh, but I thought they did fight then. Well, no, she she was pissed off at him because she she thought he was holding back, and I mean he was. Yeah, and so now oh, so now you're thinking they're gonna they're gonna have to fight. I was thinking he'd have For to fight real? some student who had a crush on Laura. I can see that. Uh, if some student who had a crush on Laura was being annoying, Laura would beat him. That's I'm true. Not <laughs> I mean, no, that that's well, totally fair. I mean, I'm not fair. saying this person is stronger than her. But, I mean, you know, because well, she yeah. could put... This could have been a childhood friend or something, and she's like, I'll only marry someone who can beat me, and so he just keeps challenging her every week. You know, right. at the beginning of every episode, uh, there's always that right before the um, theme song comes on in the TV show. Yeah, and, and she beats him without even, you know, glancing. Yeah, everybody remembers Ronmo one half, right? I only saw a <laughs> tiny little bit of it, but yes. I had thought you were going for, like... Something other than Ronmo one half because because <laughs> that's a pretty dated show. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> oh, hey. I... What? A castle. We were told <laughs> like, there was a castle. I like how they sort of all of a sudden see that. <laughs> well, it was off camera earlier. Yeah, it doesn't count. Yeah, yeah. That's Lowengrin Castle. Absolutely, one hundred percent not a dungeon. <laughs> oh, good. It's not shimmering. There's too much fog. <laughs> oh, and... Uh, fog is water, and water shimmers. Hey, guys! Gaius is an artist! Cool. To be fair... We don't actually be... know if he is an artist, or if he just likes pretending he's an artist. To be fair, he's that would be a pretty good painting. Yeah. Oh yeah, we have to do work. We just hired a guy who's a software engineer at Firefox. Okay. Huh. A professional? I mean, one of my uh, favorite paintings is Wander Above the Mists. Which is vaguely similar to that, except not really. Hey guys, we're basically being bracers this chapter. Oh. Weird. It's not like any of the other chapters where we've basically been brazers. Yeah, but I mean, this one's more explicit. <laughs> sure. We're actually going to the Bracer Guild to get our... Our, um... You mean as opposed to the last chapter where we literally slept in the Bracer Guild? Yes, but we did not get our tasks from a guild member. Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. We got our tasks from Machis' dad. I thought we got them from Oliver. Uh, A, no, and B, Oliver is not a member of the Bracer Guild. He basically is. He's an Imperial Prince. That's not. He's not a part of the Bracer Guild. He's a member of Estelle's party. That counts. Oh, so Chloe is uh is also a Bracer now. Basically, she's not a Bracer. Tita's not a Bracer either. 
Can you ever kick um, Estelle and Joshua out of the party? I'll say yes. Because that totally means that you could have a party of totally not bracers, go out, do a bracer quest, come back, get bracer points. Um, based on the way you phrased that question and the events of game of the second game, the answer is technically yes. Okay, I'm going to take that, expand it to somewhere where it uh, suits my purposes. Okay. And then decline to play the second game so you aren't willing to prove me wrong. Willing or able? <laughs> willing. Because you don't want to spoil it for me. Um, I mean... Ignorance be my shield. Like, there is a, there is the minor spoiler of Joshua is not in a lot of the second game. Well, that's not a spoiler. So, he can't be in your party if he's not there. So yes, you do get you do get a party without Joshua. Right, but I said and Estelle. And I interpreted that as or. So there. So there. Um, no. <laughs> Estelle is always part of your party in the second game. How disappointing. Why? She's the best character. She's not the best character. You're right. Annalise is not technically part of your party for the whole game. She's the second best character. Yep. This, uh... This maid is kind of a creeper. By the by. That's why I'm talking to her. Okay. That's why I'm here. Who the hell is Carno? He's probably some kid in the, uh, the, the town. Oh, I thought it might have been, like, one of Laura's hooligan brothers. I think Laura's an only child. I could be wrong about that, though. Oh. It would have been kind of interesting to have... No, that's fine. Um... It would have been kind of interesting to have Laura have useless waste of, waste of space <laughs> as family members as a contrast to uh, Usus. Nope. Meh. You don't want tea? Not really. Nope. Also, food seems to be kind of useless in this game. <laughs> because it's mostly good for getting EP back, and that's something you basically don't use. There's food that gets CP back. <laughs> sure, but you get CP so quickly you don't bother. A cross inside a circle. Any idea what it means? No uh, Earth is here. For sure. There are a number of theories, though. Unfortunately, the meanings of most animus symbols have been lost over time. No, no, that's just the symbol for Earth. The astronomical symbol is a cross inside a circle. But it's a way to call spirits. No, it's a way to call, like, your neighbor down the walk or something. It's not a theory, it's also a hypothesis. A yeah, it's probably backed by evidence. <laughs> okay. Yeah, please don't break up my, uh, destroy stuff in my, my hometown. Bah. There might be treasure inside it. Uh, probably not. This building is the Legram branch of the Bracer Guild. That would be why it says Bracer Guild right there in giant letters. Also why we can't go in. Yes, we can. Oh, well, we couldn't. Yes, Reen, the Guild Emblem. Oh, I guess that's fair. Because there's no political pressure out here. 
Well, there is political pressure, just... Not the same type. ...different. Because nobody cares about what happens in Legram. Legram. Uh, but if I call it Legroom, I feel better about being able to stretch out under my desk. Oh, okay. <laughs> I need to get a new desk. Well, not need. I'm, I'm going to. I thought you found one. I found one. I haven't bought it yet. Gotcha. I'm, Those I'm are... pretty sure Bracers can be explicitly bribed with Mira. Those are both good things. Like, isn't one of the whole ideas of Bracers, yeah, we'll gladly solve your problems. For money. Uh, no. It's, we'll do, we're, we're do-gooders for money. We don't, bribing people with Mira to do bad things is the, um, is what Jaegers do. Jaegers are not Bracers. One person's good thing is another person's bad thing. Fair. Uh, the Bracers don't assassinate people. No, they can just decline to rescue them. Unless they get paid. <laughs> hey, blonde guy. I I don't see why it would be that weird to know who the instructor behind that weird uh and the fact that they're both he, class structures that they've got going on and he's a bracer and the she's a Academy. former bracer so that also makes sense Well yeah but it's not like like maybe it's that he was knowing... so informal about you know he just calls her Sarah I don't know also, if you expect Sarah to be keeping your no keeping people's noses to the grindstone, <laughs> it probably implies you don't know Sarah very well. That's actually fair. <laughs> he didn't do much. He pointed us in the... He, he mentioned the, um, the underground waterway and told us that we could... or sort of told us that we could go through it. Okay, I guess so. I mean... Telling someone how to conduct a jailbreak is kind of useful. Yeah, but I mean, Fee was the one that knew how to do the jailbreak. They just needed to get to the jail. That, that's part of the jailbreak. Okay. So, uh... For those of you that don't know, which is you two and potentially some of the audience, uh, Tovel is actually uh, kind of a legacy character. Um, there is a no the the novels that you can collect in the first in uh, Trails in the Sky uh, that we're getting yeah. the reprints of. There, it's it's a novel written by the guy who runs the curio shop in Trista, and the main character in the book is this guy with a different name. And it's actually a story, it's a slightly fictionalized story of something that he actually did as a bracer. Huh. And I had uh, sort of assumed that the character in those fic in those novels was not a fictional character that actually existed. You, do you actually read the books? In the game. I glanced at them. Okay, because it's an actual novel. Like, the first couple, because those I could buy 
Oh, and I sure. didn't bother actually figuring out how to find the rest. But yeah, um, he, uh, he also shows up, um, after the events in, um, after the events in Liberal, uh, Estelle and Joshua head outside of, um, Liberal, and they end up working with Tobel for a little while. So, <laughs> he, he has been around in the, in the outskirts of the main story. Okay. Oh, wow. So he'd basically be another Cassius. Sure. There we go. Yeah. I would, I would really love to see um, Laura's dad going all around Erebonia <laughs> doing the various fetch quests in order to get approval from each of the heads to become an actual full-fledged bracer. Yeah. Also, that's confirmation that Estelle's dad is still in the army. Yeah. He rejoins... The, at the end of the first game, he, he quits being a bracer and rejoins the army, and he is in the army throughout the second game. In the third game, he quits the army and becomes a bracer. Correct. Our state school training bout. I wish for Lady Laura and you, her classmates, to engage in a friendly training bout against students of the Our state school. We're totally going to fight Laura in that. A monster has been... Uh, okay, big monster that we need to go kill. Uh, how do we know the monster isn't actually just a good guy? I need someone his, to replace a lot of ornament lights along the highway. If you like putting lights into things, you can find me at Watto's store. Oh, now they're just straight up stealing things from Trails in the Sky. Have you forgotten that we liter that they literally stole a quest from Trails in the Sky wholesale in Chapter 1? Which one was that? One of the very first quests we did was take this bulb, put it in this light, and the code was exactly the same as the code from the first quest in Trails in the Sky. Oh, well, no, I didn't it's, remember it's that. I was remembering the time that um, you had to replace lights when you got Tita. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that one wasn't actually a quest. That was just her doing her th a thing on her own. It was mandatory for the game to continue. I guess that's fair. You don't, go, you don't get BP for it, though. Wait, we actually accomplished something useful without getting paid? Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> 